Let me just real quick survey. How many of you have a mom? So, gotcha. Uh, oh, praise the Lord. Well, you know what? We were thinking and praying about what to what to do today for Mother's Day and how to honor your moms and 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 what word we ought to bring today and just share with you. And uh, then I realized something that there's just some things that are better instructed by someone who has walked or is walking that road uh, in being a mom. And I don't have any experience at being a mom personally. So uh, I want you to make welcome to the platform this morning, Pastor Lisa. And she's going to come and share with you a word this morning, encourage you moms. It's going to be a great word. Would you make her welcome this morning? Good morning. I'm excited to be here today. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Can we give our mothers another round of applause? Happy Mother's Day. Some of you, as you came in this morning, if you saw our little fun slideshow that was showing, then you've got a little cheat sheet. But I'm going to see how many of you, and I'm not just going to say mothers, how many women in the room can help me with some of these this morning. I'm going to say, I'm going to begin the phrase and you help me complete it. Are you ready? Are you ready? All right. Mom would always say, close the door. You don't live in a... That's all right. If you don't have anything nice to say, that's right. What part of no? Y'all got it. You keep crossing your eyes that way. <laughs> They're going to get stuck. That's right. Oh, mom would always say, make sure you wear clean underwear. In case you get in an accident. Because I said so. That's why. I brought you in this world. Ooh, y'all felt that one. That was from the soul right there. Y'all felt that one. If I've told you once, a thousand times, honey, if all your friends jumped off a bridge, would you jump to? And this is a famous one as well. If mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. Amen. Amen. I'm excited this morning, y'all. I got my number one mom pin on that I got from my girls this morning. All the fun little gifts I got. And I got my little bracelet on. I got to tell y'all what my bracelet says. I love this. It says... My faith is bigger than my fear. And how many mamas in the room need that today? My faith is bigger than my fear. I love that. I am so glad that each of you chose to be at Faith Assembly this morning to worship with us. I'm thankful today to have, she's not going to like me doing this, but I'm thankful to have my mama here this morning to celebrate Mother's Day. Y'all clap for my mama. She's here today. I'm so thankful. What a testimony she has as well that I'll have to share with you sometime that God has seen her through a lot, right, Mama? And God is faithful, and I'm happy to have her here today. Today, though, I want to share with you a message uh, about being a mom who matters. Don't you want to be a mom who matters? Just a matter-of-fact kind of mama, being a mom who matters. And I'm sure many of you know that being a mother does not always include the birthing process, does it, ladies? But oftentimes, we find ourselves in situations that we're an adopted mom. God puts us in situations where we're there for others. And however being a mom looks for you, is special. It's a special role. It's a God-given assignment. However God has placed you in that role, I want you to know that you matter that you're a mom who matters, not only is it when we have children of our own, but sometimes God places women in circumstances where they just become a mom to those who need it. Have you ever had women like that in your life? You just become a mom when needed. And if you have moms like that in your life, how have they influenced you and how have they shaped you? And I'm sure you're thankful for those women that God has placed in your life and how they have transformed you, influenced you, and shaped you in tremendous ways. 
Today, I want us to be reminded that however that looks, God, want us, God wants us to remember that it's a special calling to be a mom, a special assignment to be a mother, even though most days, if you're like me, we can get caught up in the ordinary moments. But today, God wants to remind us that being a mom is not just ordinary. He's not just with you in the ordinary moments, but he's also with you in the extraordinary moments. God wants to remind us that being a mom holds with it an influence that is immeasurable. We couldn't even begin this morning to tell the impact that moms have on our lives. It's just immeasurable. Being a mom myself, I know that each of us want to be successful. Moms, don't you want to be successful? We want to be a good mom. We want to be a great mom. We want to be an awesome mom. And we want to feel that we've always done what's right for our children. But how many of you have those days as a mother where you feel like you are an absolute failure. Anybody with me? You feel like that you just don't get it right. Some days we feel like that we don't matter at all. Some days we feel like that we're not having the influence that we want, and we certainly don't feel like we're making the best choices for the people that God has entrusted to our care. Sometimes it seems a far concept that God has entrusted the rearing the influencing, the parenting of anyone to us. Anybody with me? You have those days. Today we are going to share about being a mom who matters. And you know, if we want to be a mom who matters, the first thing I believe that we've got to do is submit to God's will. Would you say that with me this morning? Submit to God's will. That's not submit to my will. That's not submit to your will, but that's to submit to God's will. We must submit to God's will in our lives and the lives of our children as well. As mothers, this submission requires a sincere faith in God. To be able to submit to God's will, it requires a sincere faith in God. To be a mom that matters, our children must see an example of sincere faith. In the world we live in today, our children must see an example of sincere faith. Having sincere faith does not require perfection. And everybody said, thank you, Lord. Having sincere faith doesn't imply that we are perfect. It doesn't imply perfection, but it does imply realness with the one true God. A sincere faith that instills in our children the truth that whether we're folding clothes, whether we're picking up the toys, whether we're singing in worship, or whether we're driving the car, hey, it could be a great day. It could be your best day. Or even on your worst day, We've got to submit to God's will and have a faith in God that sees us through it all. Teaching our children that we serve the one true God, a God that we can trust with our lives, and hey, a God that we can trust with the lives of our children. Aren't you thankful for that? A trust that says to our children that this influence that we impart to them will, la- will far outlast any material blessing that we could give them, anything else that we could put in their hands. Submitting to God's will in our lives and the lives of our children and showing them a sincere faith in the one true God transcends all other things in their lives. This morning, my thoughts go to Mary, the mother of Jesus. And Mary, the mother of Jesus, was only a teenager when she was confronted with the challenge to be completely submitted to the will of God. Can you imagine Mary, a teenager, and that moment came when Gabriel gave her the angelic message that she was to carry the Christ? Mary was stunned to say the least, don't you think? Mary had a moment where her life was interrupted and it caused her to walk out a different journey than what she had planned. Hey, mamas, how many times have we held that little baby in our arms and we think we know the path that we're going to take with this little child. We think we know the path that is ahead, but how many of you know only God knows? 
Only God knows, and it's in that moment that we've got to have that sincere faith in God and know that we can trust him with our lives and we can trust him with the lives of our children. In our God-given assignments as a mom, we're to submit to God's will. Not our will for ourselves and not our will for our child, but God's. I love this key phrase that we see in Scripture about Mary where she said, I am the Lord's servant. May it be. Isn't that beautiful? I am the Lord's servant. May it be. Mary was a teenage girl, and she was confronted with a new journey. She was confronted with a moment that changed her life forever. But Mary never wavered from her complete submission to God's will. Do you think Mary was nervous? Certainly. Was she unsure of her own abilities? Absolutely. Do you think Mary was anxious about what she was facing? Of course. Mama, have you ever been there? Have you ever been in that moment where you're really nervous about what's happening? You're really nervous about that moment that you're having to submit to God's will. You're unsure of your own abilities. And you're anxious about the very thing you're facing. I know as moms, we've all had that come into our path. We've all been there in our own way. And Mary, she had a moment as a mother where like any parent in this room would be, she wanted the best for her son. She wanted the best for her child. She wanted only protection for her son. She wanted only protection for her child. Yet, what did Mary have to do in that moment? She had to submit. She had to submit to the will of God, being fully aware that, hey, life happens and not all things that happen in life are pleasant. But she also knew that she served a God that was able to keep her child. Amen? Mary was unlike a lot of parents in the world today because Mary was, first of all, completely committed to God. Mom, are we submitting to God's will even when it's not easy with the lives of our children? Matthew 7, 24 through 27 says, Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house upon the rock. And the rains fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on the house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his, built his house on the sand. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. I read these verses and do you know what I read? I read that the winds blew and I read that the rains fell and I read that it beat upon the house. And how many of you know this wasn't just on the house built on the rock, but this also happened to the house built on the sand. It not only happened to the person doing right, but it also happened to the person doing wrong. It came upon both. Both faced hard times and trials, but had stuff come at them. Both had stuff come at them that they had to navigate through. Anybody with me? You've had the winds blow. You've had the rains fall, and things come against your house. It came upon the person doing right, and it came upon the person doing wrong. Both faced hard times and trials, and both had stuff come at them, and they had to navigate through it. The house built on the rock had a solid foundation, had a solid foundation, and was able to stand. And mom, today, you are part of that solid foundation. You are part of that solid foundation. It's because we are submitted to God's ways and we are submitted to God's truth that we will stand. Building on a foundation that will not fail. Moms, parents today, hey, the winds will blow. The rains will come. The hard times will beat against the house. But it's important today to be a mom that matters, that we build that foundation and we submit to God's will and we teach our children that we serve the one true God who will not fail and he will see us through those times. It's important, mom, that we be part of that foundation and that when it comes, our house will stand and God will see us through. As mothers, sometimes we are asked by God to walk through a difficult time. Just as I know that must have been for Mary, the mother of Jesus, that must have been a very hard 
time for her. But we are asked to trust God with our children, and we are asked to trust God with our families. Sometimes we have to trust God through sickness. Sometimes we have to trust God through sickness. Sometimes through our child getting a diagnosis that we had not planned on. Sometimes we have to trust God through a bad report, and sometimes our family walks through financial strain, and we have to know that God is our provider. Sometimes we feel that we can't give our children everything that we want to, and oftentimes it looks like a phone call in the middle of the night. Sometimes we look and we see our children straying away from God, and other times it just looks like God asking us to release our child into all that he has for our child. Sometimes our child has to be completely placed in God's care as they walk out this calling, and that's not easy for a mom, is it? That's certainly what Mary had to do with her son Jesus. Remember, mom, be a mom that matters, that says, no matter what comes, I will stand on the foundation that is truth. I will stand on the foundation that is solid. And as I trust and submit to God, I know that God will make a way. Has anybody here today, God will make a way. Amen. God knows all. God knows all. And God not, is not only going before you in your ordinary moments, but God is going before you and in your extraordinary moments as well. And maybe you need to be reminded of this today. God didn't promise days without pain, laughter without sorrow, or sun without rain. But he did promise strength for the day, comfort for the tears, and light for the way. Because I know my God is faithful. And if he brings you to it, what does it say, church? He'll bring you through it. Praise God. Thank you, God, that as we are moms who matter and we submit to God's will, we know that whatever comes, God will see us through. The second thing today, to be a mom that matters, you don't have to be perfect. Glory. You don't have to be perfect, right? Thank you, Lord, that we don't have to be perfect. This is an important topic because not only as moms, but also as women, we can't be all that God is calling us to be until we realize that we have to be real with ourselves. We have to be real with ourselves and we have to be real with God. On any journey that we are on, whether it's mom, whether it's an adopted mom, whether it's a stepmom, whether it's a woman, hey, God meets us right where we are, never where we pretend to be. God meets us right where we are, not where we pretend to be. You know, in life, raising two girls that are now beautiful young ladies, one thing they surely know is that mama's not perfect. But you know what I pray right in the middle of that, that mama's not perfect? They know that they have instilled in them a foundation that says, even though mama's not perfect, I serve a God who is. Right in, mi- right in the middle of the imperfection, I know that God is perfect. Often we allow moments when we were not the best mom, we were not the best wife, We were not the best friend. We can let those moments make us feel less than. And we can let those moments make us feel like a failure. Maybe a moment when you weren't the best mother. Maybe that moment when your weakness popped out. Or maybe that moment where that struggle was at the forefront. But here's the thing. Weakness and failure is the very reason we needed a Savior. Weakness and failure is the very reason that Jesus came and died on that cross. Weakness and failure is the very reason that we need Jesus. 2 Corinthians 12, 9, but he said to me, this is so beautiful, but he said to me, what does he say, church? My grace, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. I'm so thankful for that today. Remember, Mom, remember that today if you feel less than, if you feel like you haven't been able to do everything that you wanted to do, remember that in the moments when your strength is gone, and I know from experience, you get to that place from time to time. 
you feel like all your strength is gone, remember that when you're submitting to God's will, seasons will come and seasons will go. But God is where you find your help. God is where you find your strength. And his grace is sufficient for you today. There's something that I believe, it came to my heart, and I believe God wants me to share it with you today. It's found in the Word where we read about the Samaritan woman. And I'm not going to read that whole account today for the sake of time, but in the Bible it talks about the Samaritan woman. And the Samaritan woman, she carried the water jugs in the heat of the day. And as I saw this picture of the Samaritan woman, I saw those water jugs on her back, and she carried those water jugs in the heat of the day. And I can't help but think that her failures hung around her neck just as those water jugs. I can't help but think that the heaviness of her pain and the heaviness of her failures pulled her down, reminding her with every step of who she was. She was an adulterer. She was married five times, and the man she was with was not her husband. And she even went to the well at the hottest part of the day to avoid the stares of the people who had seen her fail over and over and over. Think about the weight of that, and think about today as my heart breaks for the mothers and the women even in this room today when we are just like this Samaritan woman. We hold on to our past, we hold on to our failures, either, even as mothers, and we walk this path with the heaviness as it brings us down and pulls us down. But can I tell you that you've made mistakes in the past? You'll certainly make a mistake or two today, and you'll make more mistakes tomorrow. Through it all, though, your task of mothering, your task of grandmothering, your task of fostering or adopting or whatever God has for you, God has a plan and a purpose and has given you a God assignment, and it will be accomplished with the help and strength of Jesus Christ. Mary, the mother of Jesus, she didn't always get it right either. At one point, she tried to interrupt Jesus and even agreed with his unbelieving brothers that his ministry needed to be tempered. Wanted to stop the ministry of Jesus even for a little while, and that was a mistake on Mary's part. Oftentimes, as a mother, if our children don't behave correctly, or if we see our children make a poor choice, what do we do? We default to our shortcomings, don't we? We default to some place that we feel like we have failed. We seem to magnify our moments of weakness or we seem to magnify failures in our mind. But how many of you know we can't allow the heaviness of our hurts? We can't allow the heaviness of our mistakes, our past and our failures and the times we just didn't get it right. We can't allow God to hinder us in this God-given assignment of being a mom who matters. But the enemy... The enemy will use those things in your life to try to destroy not only you, but to destroy your family. Instead, as we look at this same woman again, she met the Savior at the well. You see, in John 4, 29, we read, hey, she had an encounter with Jesus where none of that mattered anymore. Amen? She had an encounter with Jesus where that was her past. And God did not hold that against her. John 4, 29, we read, Come and see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could he possibly be the Messiah? Hey, Mom, here's where it is. Here's where the foundation is. In the midst of all of that, it's when we say to our children, Come and see. Come and see how amazing that is. How amazing that is that we can teach our children to come and see. Come and see a man who heals our disease. Come and see a man who is our provider. Come and see a man who is ever faithful. Come and see a man who understands our deepest needs. Come and see a man who knows every mistake and every failure and fault that I have, yet he loves me anyway. Come and see a man who died for you and died for me. The Bible says that we're not to just walk around with heaviness and guilt and hurt and condemnation. The Bible says we're not to walk around with those things, but here's what it tells us to do. Deuteronomy 11, 18 through 21. You shall therefore lay up these words of mine in your heart and in your soul. 
and you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall teach them to your children, talking of them when you are sitting in your house and when you are walking by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates that your days and the days of your children may be multiplied in the land that the Lord swore to your fathers to give them as long as the heavens are above the earth. When I read this scripture, this, this is the Lord telling us to frequently daily, every moment to recount to our children the faithfulness of God, to recount to our children the ways of the Lord. And doing so will teach them to put their trust in God and what a heritage we will leave. To be a mom who matters, the Bible teaches us to talk of them as we sit among our children, to write them in our hearts and keep them in our homes as we see the faithfulness of God. What, what greater gift, what greater gift could we bestow to our children? Teach the goodness of God to our children. Compel them with our words. Compel them with our life to come and see a man who knows our hearts. He knows our weaknesses. He knows every time we get it wrong or every time we make a bad parenting decision, yet he loves us anyway. Lord, we thank you for that today. Father, we thank you for that today. We thank you that you are our strength. We thank you, God, that we don't have to tote the heaviness of that on our shoulders. We don't have to tote those heavy water jugs on our shoulders as that Samaritan woman. We don't have to worry about those that we feel around us that see us fail over and over again because we can come and see a man who loves us in spite of it all. Third, a mom who matters never relinquishes the title. A mom who matters never relinquishes the title. Once a mom, always a mom, right? A mom who matters will always be there no matter what her child does. They will always walk through it together. I want to take our thoughts back to Mary, the mother of Jesus, and it's a beautiful picture as we see her son hanging on the cross, we look and we see the mother of Jesus and we see that Mary stood near the cross. Mary stood near the cross and how beautiful that is. Mary didn't stand passively by the cross, but Mary was down at the cross. She was down in the journey of her son. She crumpled herself at the feet of the cross. Do you think Mary's heart was cut deeply? I'm sure it was as she stood there and saw her son. It was, and she was there, and she was a mother from the beginning of the journey, and she was a mother at the end of the journey. Sometimes we don't see everything in the physical that's happening with us. Sometimes we don't see everything in the physical that's happening with our children. Sometimes we don't understand it all. But being a mom who matters is a God-given assignment, and he calls us not only to be a mom at the beginning, but to be a mom at the end of the journey. A mother called by God never relinquishes her title. A mother's love shapes individuals that God has entrusted to us. And today we live in a society that seems to encourage women to find their worth outside of their families. But can I tell you today, there's no greater assignment than the assignment to teach your family of the foundations of God. There's no greater assignment than to be a mother who will submit to the will of God no matter what comes. There's no greater assignment than to be a mother who teaches her children of the foundations of the very one true God who will see us through it all. You don't have to be perfect, and you don't have to walk around with the heaviness of any failures or any mistakes you've made. Because if God brought it into your life, if God allowed it into your life, He will see you through it. <laughs>